Alright. Oh, that toe is all messed up. Oh, I hate these goofy shoes. But, but, but they do the job. They stop my feet from getting all cut up on oysters and kicking toes and losing toenails and all that fun. You don't care. You're just here to learn how to take photos of the stars. Might seem a little different because it's, well, it's during the day right now. Shooting the stars starts with this. Not this. It starts with going on a little adventure and scouting a location. Now, what I'm looking for on this little trip is one, to not fall over like I usually do, but to actually find a spot where the Milky Way coincides with landscape so, I can, so that I can put a little figure, myself essentially, on that cliff's edge and be a feature in the Milky Way. So stick around and I'm going to show you exactly how to scout and then later in the video I'm going to go through the basics of shooting astrophotography. The actual settings I use, Ooh, a couple little secret hacks to get perfect focus and how to use an intervalometer to actually get in the shot. But for now, we're gonna, shit, we're gonna climb this cliff. I gotta go around there. Should be fun. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> Look at that. So what I'm looking for is a landscape that faces due west. Because where I am on the east coast of Australia, that is way, what the f I found the most precarious way to get over here. Anyway, because where I am on the east coast of Australia, that's where the Milky Way sets. Oh, how? How do YouTubers do it? This camera is so heavy, so heavy. And I'm thinking, sun setting that way right now. So that means where I am currently, the Milky Way should be setting in that direction. So I'm going to, I'm going to make this jump. <laughs> I am going to set up a shot looking back towards the sun and later, later, the Milky Way should be right there. In the meantime, oh, no, I think I found the spot. Oh my God, my arm's gonna fall off. So glad I got my goofy boots on. Can't stop, can't stop, won't stop. All right. That was kind of fun. I think we found the spot. See the sun setting? I'd put money on the fact that the Milky Way is going to come down over that section. Oh, I'm going to put you down on this rock real quick. Stay. Oh. Yeah. Give your boots for the win. Mm. Have I covered everything? I've learned. I'm learning this YouTube thing. All right, covered everything for now. Um, let's check back when it starts, shall we? All right, we are back. And in probably 
the sketchiest spot to be filming video. -hoo -hoo. I'm gonna stop for a second. So, actually, I had a little ledge. I'll put you down, hold on. All right, so you saw me scout this location during the day and that is probably the most important thing when taking photos of the stars because as you can see, well, you can't see, there's nothing. You can see this rock, which I'm gonna climb in a second. And that's about it. Planning your shot is absolutely key when it comes to shooting the stars. A couple other things. Now, the Milky Way is essentially what you're aiming, aiming to capture. And that is, there's almost a season for shooting the Milky Way. And it's different in different parts of the world at different times of the year. So my recommendation is to, to Google it and figure out where you are and what's the best time of year to shoot Astro. For instance, I'm in Australia right now on the East Coast in Northern Queensland and the galactic core of the Milky Way, it sets at 10 o'clock at night here at this time of year. Now it's not ideal, but it's all I gotta work with right now. It's setting like almost like the sun or like the moon. It's different here, it's gonna be different wherever you are, so just keep that in mind. What I'm planning is to have me standing on the edge of this cliff Literally like a tiny little figure just immersed in the Milky Way. Fingers crossed it works out. I've got eight o'clock now, so I've got to get I've actually gotta get moving and get this done. Actually the tide's coming up, so we should probably actually move this party along. The shot I want is essentially all oh, the tides come up a lot. I like a lot a lot. But we're still good. Oh. You know what? I might put you guys down for a sec because otherwise I'm going to fall down because climbing around during the day was hard enough, but this is actually pretty sketchy. So it's, well, I want to be way over there. Shit. Yeah. Well, that is the slipperiest rock ever. Right, so at this point, now is just really about going through this, the settings. Uh, I'm gonna be shooting on my old 6D with a 16 to 35 at 16 mil. What I wanna do is shoot with the aperture as low as possible so that it's letting as much light in as possible. What I would recommend is at least 3.5 below, 2.8, obviously, the wider you can get, the better, but the more expensive it's gonna be. Also, full frame camera is kind of a must. You can get away with it, but realistically, full frame, 2.8. This is a eight year old camera and it is still a beast. You can pick the body up for like 500 bucks and the lens, well, a little bit more, but it's one of those things you just need to do when it comes to shooting astrophotography. The other thing to think of is how much your camera can handle ISO. So how high you can boost that ISO before it's just a grainy piece of shit. This one gets to about 5,000, 6,400, and that's about as much as it goes. Still my favorite camera when it comes to Astro. Shooting this on the EOS R, R right now doesn't actually do as good a job as this old bad boy. Next thing to think about is your shutter speed. Now, you're obviously gonna to wanna to leave that open as long as possible, but you've gotta think about the stars and they're actually moving. When you leave the shutter open for so long, you can get that little bit of blur, especially around the edges of your frame. There's a rule that it's easy to follow. It's called the 500 rule, where you basically take 500 and divide it by the focal length you're going to be working with. So, I don't usually push it to that extent, because it's just on the border, especially around the edges. Um, 16 mil, you'd be looking at 31 seconds, but I usually, I'd go for 25. Another thing to think about is to have a two second timer or a remote shutter. So that when you press that button, you're not getting that little bit of camera shake because that will just ruin the photo. Just a little, you just be able to see it. It's like, oh, no, it's, it's just not sharp. And you know what, just not sharp is, well, it's just useless. That was a bit savage. Now, focusing, Focusing can be a bit of a bitch. Um, don't just put it to infinity because it's just slightly off. 
So what I recommend doing is hitting the live view, bringing up the screen on the uh, actual camera and then zooming all the way in. And when you do that, your sensor will be able to pick up just tiny little details. So if you're focusing on, if you can find a star in the background and micro adjust it, it will be perfectly sharp. That's the best way to do it. If you can't do that, grab a head torch, put it out somewhere in the wilderness, out there, focus on that. Street lights, you name it, any kind of light, and just get that pin sharp focus. Sneaky hack. Is that? Salt is getting in my friggin' lens again. Damn it. Um, okay, sneaky hack. So that you're not like trying to figure out and doing 30 second exposures all the time to like actually get a composition because well it's dark and you can't see what you're shooting so you're just gonna have to guess and like shoot as you go. Quick way to do it is to just boost the ISO as high as it goes, 40,000, whatever you can get to, and then take a two second shot, another one, two seconds here, or whatever it happens to be, and then figure out your frame. From there, dial it back to the settings you've, you've, that is a bump, get off me. From there, dial it back to the settings and fire off your frame. All right, last thing, just, this isn't a basic hack, this is just what I'm gonna do with this shot. I'm gonna put my remote timer on for this one. It's gonna take a photo every 15 seconds so that it's continually taking photos over and over and over again. And then I'm gonna wander out, go stand on this little, little rock up there, and one of the 20 photos will be that, that banger. Or so I plan. No, it will be. I know, I got this nailed. I've never shot this shot before, but when you do it as much as I do, you better hope you can actually pull it off. Moving on. Should we just take the photo? Let's take the photo. Alrighty then. I'm gonna swap cameras and uh, talk you through this while I'm taking the photos. Let's set this bad boy up. Also, if it's super windy, keep your tripod nice and low because, well, it's windy and you'll get that little bit of shake, especially if you've got a potato of a tripod, like I do, but it's light and it does the job and it's wet still. Not ideal, but whatever. We'll figure it out. Nice and sturdy like. I'm gonna, I'm gonna swap lenses because I've got the 24 to 70 on this one and the 16 to 35 on that one. And I need that, I need that lens. I need that lens on this camera. So we're gonna go dark for a little bit and I'm just gonna talk you through what's happening as you see all of the shots that this camera takes. All right. Bear with me, we'll be back. So this one is one of those rubbish shots. Same with this one, I'm just trying to figure out where I'm actually gonna take the photo. This is the frame that I'm liking. I can see the Milky Way up in the back, back there. Now that I've dialed my settings back so it's an actual decent photo. And that's the, the light trail of me just heading in. I'm kind of setting up the shot, figuring out so I don't fall off the cliff. Still kind of figuring myself out. Now I'm just gonna stand there for a couple minutes. So I'm gonna get one shot out of every three, maybe. Oh, that is, mm-hmm, that's the one. That's also beautiful, just without the light. While I'm up there, I may as well get a couple of options rather than running back and forth. Well guys, I hope that was helpful. Let me know in the comments below what you thought and if there's anything I can improve or anything that you'd like to learn yourself. Or if you just wanna see me go on stupid adventures let me know and I will try to facilitate those without dying. Drop me a comment, hit that like button, and if you aren't already, hit that subscribe button because we are going on a lot more adventures. Peace out guys, I'll see you soon.